Hello and welcome to the first installment in a series where I'm going to be solving the Advent of Code challenges using POSIX Shell. So if you don't know, Advent of Code is um, a, a series of puzzles, uh, programming challenges that is published every December. Um, you can choose to solve them in any programming language you like. I'm going to be using POSIX Shell, which um, Probably not the best language, not, not the right language to be using for these kinds of problems, but I'm going to see how far I can get with it. And um, yeah, I'm going to take you along for the ride and we'll see how far we get. Now I have had a quick go at some of the first few days, but I wasn't signed in, so I didn't have access to this, like a second part to these challenges, it seems. Um, so I'm kind of starting fresh from the beginning so you can see how I'm coming up with these solutions. So without further ado, let's look at the first puzzle, day one. There is a, a Christmas themed backstory here. It's mildly amusing. I'm just gonna skip straight to the data. So this is our input. Well, this is example input. And then it generates an input for me, which we'll get to in a minute. But basically what we have to do is um, count how many times the number is increasing. So we're given a, a list of numbers and each time it increases, we've got to count that. And at the end of it, we've got to say how, how many times did it increase? What was that count? So, um, yeah, that's the only one that I've already submitted on the website, but I'm just going to do it again for you here. So I'm going to get our puzzle input. 2021. I've kind of already set up a repo for this. So day one, that's our input. Um, my understanding is that it's different for everyone, and this is the input that I've been uh, generated, that has been generated for me. Uh, how many measurements are larger than the previous measurement? So I'm going to create a shell script here. Specifically, my slash bin slash sh is linked to dash. So it's very minimal shell just based on the POSIX spec. Um, it doesn't add much more on top of it. There's no bash, there's no fancy features like arrays. <laughs> um, so it's going to make things pretty tricky, not having arrays. There's also no floating point arithmetic. So hopefully we're not going to need that in <laughs> these challenges, but I guess we'll see how far we get. So we have our input, and now the way I'm going to do this is create a function, a main function. And I'm just going to... Actually, you know what? I won't do that. I will just feed it the input when I run it in the shell. So we're going to start with a basic read loop, which is just going to read each number line by line. So while read x, for now I'm just going to print it just to show you that this is working, or how this is working. So like x equals that. And then if I run this, make it executable, day one, okay, it's waiting for input, so I can put some numbers in like two, three, four, 700 and 7, and 70, sure, why not? Uh, so that's how that's working. And then I could feed it the input that I've got here. So that's what that looks like. It's just a bunch of numbers. Uh, oh, I've done this wrong. Day one, there we go. So yeah, it's just a bunch of numbers. So now instead of just printing them, we've got to count how many times it increases. So the way I'm going to solve this is by comparing it with the previous result. So we're going to have a variable n which is going to keep track of how many times it's increased. We'll start that at zero. And then we need to keep track of what the previous result was. So I'm going to put that in y. So essentially we kind of have um, the present number and the previous number. So if I were to print those, that's what you get. Is that right? So it starts at zero and then, yeah, 189, 190. Yeah, that works. Um, but we don't just want to print it, we want to increment n if and only if x is greater than y. 
because that would indicate indicate an increase. So n, I'm going to use an arithmetic expansion here, and I'm going to say n plus 1, but only if some condition holds true. Otherwise, I'm just going to add 0. So this is underscore is going to be our condition here. It's going to be that x is greater than y. So this is what's called a ternary operator with the question mark and the colon. So if this condition holds true, then this whole expression here becomes a 1. Otherwise, it becomes a 0. And of course, adding 0 to n has no effect. So we're only incrementing n here if x is greater than y. Um, now we've started with y equals 0 for no particular reason. I guess we're assuming that all the input is positive integers. So if we start with y equals 0, we're definitely going to get n incremented on the first measurement, which is not what we want because this doesn't count as an increase. So we're actually going to have to start with n equals minus 1. I think that will work. And then, then at the end of it, we'll just print the n. Thirteen ninety. So that's how many times it increases. I guess I could test it manually as well. So one, two, three. That should be what? Two increases. And we get a two. Um, so let's try submitting our result here. Hopefully this works in EWW. Um, oh, actually, that's for right. I already did this. So I already submitted my answer for part one, and it was thirteen ninety. So yeah, that's right. But that's the only one I've submitted so far. It was just I just did that as a kind of test. First half of this puzzle is complete. It provides one gold star. Great. Now part two, I have not done. I haven't even really read this. Um, so I'm going to be solving this as we go. So considering every single measurement isn't as useful as you expected, there's too much noise in the data. Instead, consider sums of th a three measurement sliding window. Oh, okay, so it's a kind of rolling average. Um, yeah. Start by comparing the first and second three measurement windows. The measurements in the first window are marked A. Their sum is 199 plus 200 plus 208 equals 607. Second window is marked B. Okay, I get the idea. So you're creating a sum of these windows of three numbers. The sum of measurements in the second window is larger than the sum of the first, so this comparison, this first comparison increased. Right, so how am I going to do this? Maybe I can find out the sums of the windows, print them out line by line, and then just feed it into this script that we have here use the same code, but just with the rolling sums, the windows. So count the number of times the sum of measurements in this sliding window increases from the previous sum. Yeah, I guess I'll do it as a separate file. Part two. Yeah, let's wrap this up in a function. So now, Day one, part two. Okay, it's doing the same thing now. But we want to pipe something into this, right? So we're going to write some code that's going to generate this list that we see here with the rolling sums, the windows. So I guess I'll just call that P2. <laughs> So what's P2 going to do? Well, we're going to have to read in the values as before, line by line. Hmm. Yeah, this is tricky. Okay, well, at the end of each iteration, we're going to want to print the sum, which I'll call S. It's just how do we get S? S is going to be... Maybe I don't need to give it a name. It's going to be the, the the first number in the window plus the second number in the window plus the third. Maybe I should 
let's call them P, Q, and R. I'm going to start them out at negative 1. And that way I can say, hmm, well I guess after each iteration you'd have R taking the value of Q and Q, PQR. Mm. Sorry, Q taking the value of R. R would then take the value of... Actually, you have to read R like that. So we're reading R each time. This is like the front of the window. And then Q is going to take the previous value of R. Oh, wait a minute. I guess that would be the end. Um, and P would take the previous value of Q. Actually, maybe these should be zero then. Yeah. So that they don't affect the sum. Yeah, I think that will work. So we're reading line by line. We're going to read each number into R. We're going to print the sum of P, Q, and R. And then we're going to assign P the value of Q and assign Q the value of R. And that way we always have Q as the number above the one we've just read, and P as the number above that, if that makes sense. And then at the end of it, we need to print the final windows, I guess. Does that even work if you can't read more numbers? I guess not, because you need the three numbers to sum up, so... Yeah, um, let's try it with the example data. Um, so, this is the example data. So let's throw that in there. Uh, let's just see what it does right now. Seven. Hang on a minute. That can't be right. Um... Let's take the day one out for now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess the issue is we're, we're printing this 199. Uh, and then 399, which is only a sum of one or two numbers, rather than three. So we need to avoid printing the sum of the window when the window has not yet reached three numbers in size. So... Um, Again, assuming our input is all non is all positive integers, then we can say, you know, only wait a second. Uh, if if Q is positive and P is positive, then we're going to print that. Otherwise, no printing happens. Because this is how many lines? 10 lines. And now we've got only 8 lines, which is what we want. So yeah, so we're missing that 199 and and then 199 plus 200, which is 399. So we've missed that off, which is good. Now we need to pipe that into our day one function, which is exactly the code that we had um, here, in day one dot sh, for the first part of the puzzle, um, except we've just wrapped up in a function, so we can just pipe it in here. So let's try that. Five. So apparently it increases five times. Is that what they say here? Uh, yep. Yeah. Does it say? Yeah. In this example, there are five sums. So that's right. So let's see if it works for our data, our puzzle input, and actually it's the same data. So, input, day one. Five again. Oh, because I'm not reading it here. Yeah. Just take that out. Okay. Wow, that's, uh, okay, that's a lot of increases. 
think there might actually be more than for part one. Which surprises me, but I don't know why that surprises me. Anyway, let's see if we can plug this in. The answer box. 1457. Is it right? Apparently it is. Another gold star. Okay, completed day one. Part two was a bit of a challenge, um, but essentially we, we just had to kind of juggle these numbers around with these three variables P, Q, and R. Now, if you wanted to change the size of the window to, you know, four or five numbers or anything else, then you'd have to rewrite the code. So this is not a, this is not a program that's kind of ge generic enough to encompass different sized windows, but, you know, that's not what the puzzle was, so I'm, I'm happy to leave it as is for now. I could try and write a program that generalizes it, but with all the limitations of POSIX shell, you don't really have arrays. I think a, I think a general solution in POSIX shell would be a lot more complicated, a lot more complex. And anyway, we've got, we've got more complex challenges to go in the following days, so yeah, that's day one done. I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something about POSIX shell, and uh, yeah, in the next video we'll be tackling day two. So, I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.